All right, it's number seven from the 2013 AP Physics B exam. This is primarily a modern physics style question dealing with atomic uh, energy levels. So we have an energy level diagram for a hypothetical atom. We don't even know what it is. And uh, we know that a bunch of electrons with n equals three, electrons in the n equals three level undergo transitions uh, in which we're getting photon emission. And they're all going to fi finish in the n equals 1 state. We want to draw arrows representing all the possible transitions. So we're going to assume that there are plenty of electrons doing this. So which ones are all positive? Well, they all have to start in energy level 3. 3 to 1 is definitely possible. It can go all the way to the ground state, emitting a high energy photon. Or it can go 3 to 2 first, and then 2 to 1. Now, those photons would be lower energy each, but their sum would equal the original photon. Those are the only three possible transitions, and that's what we're looking for for A. B, we want to calculate the longest wavelength of photons that the atom can emit. Your longest wavelength will always be associated with your lowest energy level, because remember, energy is directly related to frequency or inversely related to wavelength. So if we have a large wavelength, we have a low energy. Ultimately, we need to first figure out which one of these three photons will be the lowest energy. Well, do the math or just look at it, and it's definitely going to be energy levels 3 to 2. We're going to have a 2.25 energy uh, e volt, EV, electron volts, whereas the next energy transition will be 3 to 12, which is 9 EV, and then the largest is 11.25 um, EV. Therefore, uh, the energy that I'm associating right now is going to equal hc over lambda. That's the equation we're using. Therefore, the wavelength is hc over e. hc, uh, h is a constant, c is a constant. If you use the joule and meter per second version, you will have to convert your energy from ev to joules. Or you can recognize that there's a version of HC provided that's already in EV on the table of information for AP Physics. So if you look at HC as a combination, you're going to get 1.24 by 10 to the 3 EV nanometers. That's 1,240 EV nm. We're going to divide that by the energy transition between 0.75 and 3 which is 2.25 EV. Your EV cancel out, leaving us our overall wavelength in nanometers. Please make sure you recognize that that is indeed nanometers. You're going to get 551 nanometers. You can leave it as 551 nanometers, or you can write 551 times 10 to the negative 9 meters, or 5.51 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. C, what is the ionization energy of the atom in the ground state? Well, that's a nice, simple concept one. The ionization energy is the energy required to get to that infin infinite level. Basically means the electron's taken off. It's, it's getting the heck out of here. It's never coming back. So when we're in the ground state, we need 12 EV to ionize. That's the answer, 12 EV. D. Photons of 11 EV are incident on the atom. What will this do to electrons in the n equals 1 state? you got to remember that to excite electrons, not ionize, but to excite electrons, the energy required is quantized, and it needs to be exact. If we shine 11 EV on a 12 on an electron in the ground state, it's going to go from, it would, it would want to try to go from 12 EV to 1 EV. Do you see an energy level associated with one electron volt? No. That means, and, and literally, it means nothing will happen. Nothing at all. There simply is not the correct exact amount of quantized energy to excite the electron, and that's how you're going to justify it. Please do not indicate that the electron will jump up and fall back down. That's not what will happen. The, electron, the, the photon will pass right on through. It will not interact with the electron at all. E. We're now going to shine 14 electron volts on the atom. What will this do to the electron? 14 EV is enough to ionize the electron, so it will. 
it's going to cause the electron to leave the atom. Therefore, you should write that. Write down that the electron will be ejected from the atom or the atom will be ionized. And you can even go as far to say that the electron will now have 2 eV of kinetic energy if you want. Recognize that to energize the atom, it needs to be quantized. To ionize the atom, you just need to have the sufficient amount of energy. And anything more than that will be absorbed in the form of kinetic energy. All right, that is it for number seven from the 2013 AP Physics exam.